running desperately far behind as usual but I got my my setup here for tonight and yeah y'all know what that is that is the rage hypodermic if you watched my whitetail video and my testing of this rage broadhead you'll know my mixed emotions and feelings about this broadhead and in my opinion when it comes to hog hunting there are far better choices matter of fact when it comes to bow hunting in general there are far better choices than a rage broadhead although i was slightly impressed with that whitetail that you guys saw just a few videos ago about the only thing that i've got going good uh, for this overpriced expandable is the stock archery arrows silence series shaft overall weights about 515 ish or so maybe a little heavier uh, grains kind of getting low on some arrows myself but if you guys are getting low on arrows you need to pick you some up there will be a link down in the description below and a discount code use this one right here save yourself some money on your next order of uh, arrows all that said i got my quick stick on for now stabilizer and if uh if it comes down to it, we're going to throw on the sniper hog lights and get after it. Links are down in the description below for that stuff. I'm pumped to get on this big boar hog. He's been coming in every night, usually about sometime in the next 30 to 45 minutes. I got about a 10-ish or so minute walk in, and that should leave me just enough time to set up and knock an arrow. Running the Matthews V3X at a whopping 75 pounds. Shot tonight's going to be at about 13 to 14 yards. I love them up close and personal, and let's go get in the stand so we can do just that. Fancy meeting you all here at a different spot. I am hunting a different feeder tonight for two reasons. Number one, um, I got skunked last night. And number two, I got obliterated by the gnats, which quickly told me that it is thermocell season once again, unfortunately. We're still running the Rage hypodermic, backed up uh, with the same setup that I gave you guys a rundown on yesterday. There's a decent decent sized sow and a bunch of piglets that have been coming into this spot so we're going to give it a go tonight. I'm really looking forward to it. They've been far more consistent than yesterday evening. They were here a little before 7 o'clock. I'm hoping they'll do the same thing tonight and give me another opportunity. So I'm chomping at the bit. It's been far too long since I've let a silent series arrow fly, especially at a hog. So I'm looking forward to this. Y'all sit back and enjoy this one with me. We should have quite the show tonight.
didn't look like I got all that great of penetration, which doesn't surprise me. I don't think she made it much past the brush line or the tree line. She was starting to slow down there towards the end. But I'm honestly surprised she ran as far as she did. She might have made it to the neighbors. That was crazy. I'm going to be quiet and see if one more pig will come back. Well, I'll be after the three amigos in the coming months. I might make it two amigos if they come back here. I'm seriously doubting it, but yes. Thank you, Lord. That was too stinking cool. That never gets old. That is so much fun. That stock archery arrow just nailed that sow. I can't believe she made it all the way across the field the way that she did. No bigger than she was. I'm kind of surprised I didn't pass right on through, but, or at least get better trip penetration. However, I don't think she's going to be too far inside that tree line down there. At least I hope. hope she didn't make it to the neighbors. This other uh, hog over here on the other hand. <laughs> dude did not stand a chance. I kind of figured they'd turn around and come back. They sure enough did. And you guys know I'm a sucker for a spotted hog. And that one is mostly red now. <laughs> I can't wait to inspect the uh, broadhead on both of them. Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna scare a few deer off, but we're gonna start this track anyway. It'll be all right. So this was the second hog. Uh, rather impressive there. <coughs> he did a little more hopping, skipping, and jumping than anything else. He didn't exactly run. He just kind of hop, skipped, and well, you know did that <laughs> you broke my knock dude knocks are expensive man all right so at first glance see if I can get this to focus I have no bent blades I don't think anyway, which is very surprising. Maybe that one on the left is uh, slightly bent in the downward direction. And I don't mean because it's swiveled over to be lower than the right one, but I think it may have a little bit of a bow in it. The tip seems to be in fairly good shape. Yeah, that left blade definitely has a just a slight bend to it. That's kind of hard for you guys to see, but it's definitely there. That's still insane. I'll get that one put away. Get that off of me. And just FYI, if you guys hear something that sounds like a shh, it's my thermosel. It's in my pocket. These gnats and mosquitoes are terrible, so this is how I'm keeping them off me. <laughs> All right, now let's take a look at this guy. I purposely put it right through the shoulder just because. I wanted to see how that head would hold up. There's the exit. That's absolutely insane right off the back of that elbow. Now what I want to do is, wow. <laughs> I want to pick up the track of our sow. I know where she ran in way down there in the corner. And I just want to see if we can maybe possibly pick something up. It looked like there was some pretty good red stuff pumping down that way. But I want to see if I can pick something up and see if it gets better as we go along. Because as of right now, there's just about nothing here from what I can tell. So from here to that back corner back there where she ran in is roughly going to be about 160 or so yards. Still just kind of blows my mind that she ran that far as i watched the video back over again and i really didn't think i was that far off i may have been a touch high but they're so close that you got to put it higher to cross through the vials because of where the exit is nonetheless i'm gonna see what i can come up with and i'll update you guys as i go along first one of the year that's a fresh one it's been broken that's cool 
This is the first bit I've found and I'm over 150 yards in. There's some more right there. Only problem is, is that it's finally opening up, but the neighbor's fence is right there. And I'm pretty sure she made it. Finally opening. She was just starting to slow down too, just as she was hitting the tree line. I don't see her anywhere in here. In this wide open area, which leads me to believe that she did cross the fence. Well, just as I suspected. Right here on the property line. And there it is on the other side. It stinks. And I didn't even get my arrow back from the first one. <laughs> That's alright though. It made it to the neighbors. That hog ran approximately 200 yards right there at it. I'm genuinely surprised that it made it as far as it did. It looked like the broadhead just had a hard time going through the ribs. And to be honest with you, I fully expected that. Or I was mostly um, anticipating that. So it's probably a good thing. And the, the good Lord was looking out for me yesterday afternoon or yesterday evening when I was hunting a much larger boar that was about twice the size of that sow. Because uh, if it had problems with that sow, I know for a fact it would have had problems with that boar, and I knew that going into it. But I wanted to push it to the limits, and apparently it only takes about an 80 pound to 100 pound sow to do, to do that. For smaller hogs and whitetail, I think it potentially is a, a good broadhead, as painful as that is for me to say. I've, I've just seen the thing fail, and it, you guys heard me say that in the whitetail video. If you haven't seen that one, there will be a link down in the description below. I'm not a fan of Rage broadheads, any of them at all. I don't care for the design. I don't care for the quality. And quite honestly, I do not care for the price. <laughs> and I'm being completely honest when I say this. I have seen Rage broadheads fail or have problems just as many times as I've seen them actually work. I've seen them open mid-flight i've seen them do this cool thing where they throw a spark whenever you shoot them i've seen them flat out just basically bounce off the side of a deer as i said in the whitetail video where i, I tested the same exact rage hypodermic i've shot the cheap knockoff versions from amazon that you can get for real real cheap and i've never shot the actual real thing itself at least not that i can remember to my knowledge because i've seen a lot of my friends and a lot of my family have so many problems with them. And so that's why I've always left them alone. And in order for me to form my own personal opinion about the broadhead, aside from what I've seen, I knew that I needed to try them out for myself. I was glad that I did, and it just completely affirms what my opinion was and has always been on the broadhead, and it's that I just don't care for them. Now, in a situation like this, by all means and even if this was the only outcome of tonight and i didn't even get a chance at that sow my opinion still wouldn't probably be changed about the broadhead itself even that whitetail that i took and that video that you guys saw i just wasn't over the top impressed with the trail that i was left i want to hear y'all's opinions of a rage broadhead specifically the hypodermic down in the comments section below. I know that there's a lot of people that love them. There's a lot of people that use them. And I'm sure that my opinion differs from a lot, but that's okay. We're all entitled to our own opinion. I also want to know in the comments section down below which broadhead you guys want me to test next. I love this kind of thing. It is just so much fun. It's one of my most favorite things to do in the spring. And I'm thankful that we got the opportunity to put at least one down. I'm sure the other one uh, is expired over on the neighbor side but it's far too late in the evening to give them a, a, a phone call and step our way over the fence we're ending this video on a high note and we're going to go ahead and also end it with another high note it's the verse of the day it comes from romans chapter 1 verse 16 it says for i am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god for salvation to everyone who believes to the jew first and also to the Greek. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I hope none of you are either, and I hope you tell somebody about it today. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, my sins, for everyone's sins. He rose again, and he lives, and for that I'm thankful. He is our path to heaven and the gift that we did not and do not deserve. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching, 
If you enjoyed this one, make sure to leave me a thumbs up and share it. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my uploads. Y'all are awesome, and I'll see you in just a few days. Strong like a tree.